made you want to get into radio in the first place? Um, for me, I think I'd always been a DJ. I don't know, since I was like five, I got my first record decks and started buying records as they were then. And um, I don't know, it just always seemed like a really natural thing for me to do. Like um, I started doing mobile discos and then became a club DJ, but they're always very much the same thing to me. It's playing songs, talking a bit, amusing people in between, or trying to. On mm. there, but so there was no sort of, you know, massive sort of moment where I thought, oh, I want to do radio. It just was quite a natural thing for me. You just yeah. like fell into it. Yeah. 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 What about yourself, Zoe? Um, I like talking. <laughs> I don't shut up. I don't. I get told off during the songs for just chatting away about nothing. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I, I'd always sort of done entertainment stuff. I was a Butlin's red coat and I did some stuff on stage, did touring theatre shows, and uh, and then I decided, right, I'd quite, I'd quite like to make a living out of chatting. So, um, and this is it. Yeah, it's a good living. I yeah, I always yeah. wanted to do it. I just think, yeah, it's a great job. Um, do you still get nervous when you present your shows? You, you do, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not not really. Um, not really when you've done a, the same show in the same place for a while. You know, you're quite comfortable with the people around you. But certainly when you start at a new radio station, and that's really strange because you get given your job. Uh, you know, you deal with the boss. He employs you. But then you do a show, and you go out. There's a whole office of people that you've never met before, and they've all heard you doing your show, and that's really weird. And you know, I sort of feel quite shy with people going, "Oh, who's he?" Oh, he's just on the radio, sort of thing. But um, I don't tend to sort of get nervous, other than if we've got live interviews or people I'm uncomfortable with, sort of thing. You never no, get I nervous about anything, do you? I don't. I don't. I very rarely get nervous. If I if I get nervous, I talk more. So you know, I suppose that sort of comes in handy yeah. with the job a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you had any other experience working in? other types of media apart from radio or is it just radio you've stuck to kind of I don't know I, I have like a, a, a silent disco company that I've gone into more recently and so for that I have to be across websites and search engine optimization I make and edit videos I, you know I produce I you know could do radio production beforehand and studio work making songs and that kind of thing but it's only really radio is my sort of main media job if that makes sense Whereas I, I use media yeah. in other things. You were on Sky Arts though. I was on Sky Arts, that's very <laughs> true, yes, yeah, yeah. For three minutes, yeah, they filmed at the festival. Hey, it's three it. minutes, it's three <laughs> minutes. You've still got another 12 to go, Andy Warhol says. But you've done some voiceovers. Yes, uh, yeah, I've done quite a few voiceovers. I used to be the voice, uh, the continuity voice for, for music. Um, I did a personal CD, yes. <laughs> Free with your washing powder, that was me. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've done a few bits on Sky News as well. If there's a really like dull story about pop music in some way, they'll uh, and they can't find anybody else, then they'll normally <laughs> call on me. Um, uh, but I, and I really enjoy that because I think it's sort of because we're quite comfortable with doing the radio show now to take yourself out and sort of push yourself in, a, in, in a, a, a bit of a different field, it's very nice to come back then to the radio and think, you know, it, it sort of gives you a, another set of um, skills, I suppose, you know, voiceovers or, or whatever, you know, sort of trying to make that, that 10 seconds in between programmes sound exciting or so that people want to listen, you know, it sort of gives you another skill to put on the radio. Um, I had to do um, a, a red carpet bit actually for an Australian radio network and and that was quite weird when you've got like celebs walking down and you literally have 15 people shouting questions at them and you've just got to try and get their attention and get a good yeah, question yeah. in there really quick and you've got to think on your feet because all the questions you're going to ask them, like someone's asked it there, there, there and then you're like, all right, I've got three seconds with Nicole Scherzing, what can I ask her? Where are your socks from? Yeah. <laughs> are you going to marry That's one for the fashion students there, that was. Uh, right, yeah, fashion yeah. journalism that was. Where are your socks from? <laughs> 
of some of the people though. We had like Heat magazine <laughs> journalists there at the same time, and, and it was a real eye opener for me what they were asking them. And the, the Heat one in particular was just firing questions like, uh, "Are you going to launch your own stationary range? Do you like pencils? What's better for you, green or red?" And they're just all these. They just didn't stop with these inane questions. Yeah. And you know, if you ever see things in magazines like. Um, Oh, Adele says she'd like to be, you know, a sheep in another life or something. That comes from someone asking stupid questions <laughs> repeatedly. Yeah. Sooner or later, you get an answer to this thing. Did you like each other instantly when you started working together? Did you click straight away, or you... we'd worked together in? Well, I uh, know we hadn't worked together. We worked at the same radio station before yeah. we came down here. Um, uh, but Gillies did the evening show, and I did the breakfast show. Um, and when we came down here, the boss managed to see some sort of spark of chemistry. Um, and I, I think over time that we've built up that trust and that relationship. In our the first radio series, Zoe was right up there. She was important because she was on the breakfast show. <laughs> so she didn't speak to me like that. Oh, <laughs> you liar! I, I, think actually, I think this is probably fair to say that it's more that our boss saw that we didn't entirely get on, that he thought mm, they could do a radio show yeah. together. <laughs> yeah. That we're really quite Three quite different, yeah. we're like yeah. opposite star signs and things. Um, yeah. Who are the favourite people you've interviewed and is there anyone you'd like to interview that you haven't yet? You go. <laughs> okay, uh, my favourite people um, to interview were Will Smith and Hugh Grant and uh, Robbie Williams in the Take That Boy is always lovely. Um, uh, but I would love, much as it's scary, and I know it would just possibly be the most awful thing in the world, I think she is the biggest superstar that we've got, Madonna. I think I'd love to interview mm -hmm. Madonna. Um, yeah, she's right up there. Uh, yeah, she'd be the one for me, I think. I I'm terrible with celebs. I don't recognise half of them. I don't know actors. When they stood in front of you. <laughs> no, really. So I get no sort of real buzz off, oh, I've met such and such famous person. But um, I am a bit of a, a geek, so I was like pleased to interview like, Fat Boy Slim and Tiny Temper and Labyrinth and um, Black Eyed Peas and anyone I can sort of talk to about how they make their songs. Uh, Calvin Harris, another one. I quite like that side of things. And Cheryl Cole was someone that I wanted to interview only because she promised a date with me years ago before she get, got married. I hadn't met her at the time. <laughs> and when I finally got to interview her, yeah. I got to ask her, was that for real that you promised a date with me? Because it came through her people. Yeah. And she's like, oh, it was you, yeah, it was real. And so I nearly got a date with Cheryl Cole. I can imagine it's so nerve wracking interviewing them people. How do you like stay calm and not be that silly or ask silly questions in front of them? Look at Zoe and you go, you ask him something. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's easier with two of us for sure, isn't it? It is, it is, because you're not <clears throat> just sat on the spot. I think the worst interviews are the ones where it's just not flowing. There's no connection between the star and the presenter. And so it's very much ask a question, get the answer. And I think if you keep eye contact and you keep a conversation going, if you're talking about their life or something that's in your life that they may connect with, whether that be what fitness they do or uh, what they had to eat last night or whatever, you just want to build some sort of a relationship in a very short space of time. So you don't act stupid, but most of the time I do act stupid. <laughs> most of the um, artists now like have media training anyway, and they do loads of interviews. So like the one to JLS One Direction, you know, you could just ask them what the time is and they'll talk because they know it's their job, you know, they're there to promote something and they'll talk and give you answers. But I um, especially found when people are really new to the industry, you can get some attitude sort of thing and people will just mm. give you one word mm. answers and that's when it really throws you. You've got 10 questions yeah. and they've answered them all in 30 <laughs> seconds. You're like, oh, and you're thinking, what can I ask them now? <laughs> four minutes to fill yet. Yeah. <laughs> Who was it? Was it Sean Kingston? Oh, yeah, he got a bit cross, didn't he? <laughs> I, I, asked, I asked Sean Kingston, you remember his song Beautiful Girl? Yeah. I was like, um, we were having a bit of banter with him, and I said, oh, Sean, did you write that song about me? That Beautiful Girl. He's like, nobody. I did not write that song about you. <laughs> and that just really killed the, uh, the atmosphere of the interview. <laughs> um, apart from Sean Kingston, what would you um, say was your worst interview? 
um, yeah. <laughs> no, we're <okay>. JLS, <laughs> JLS, that didn't go down very well when I got Ortis's name wrong. What is it? Horatio. Yeah, that one. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, we've had, we must have had loads Harvey. of bad interviews. Oh, Harvey. <laughs> you ever heard of the So Solid crew and Harvey? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, that was, that was terrible. I never even broadcast that. He came down um, for this, he was launching a solo career and he was with Alicia mm. Dixon at the, at the yeah. time, uh, they, before they got married. And she came down and sat in the studio and so like the first thing I said to him was, oh, Alicia, you've ruined it a little bit by coming along, you've ruined my first question. And, to, and so Harvey was like, why, what was your first question? Um, and I said, oh, I was going to ask you, do you ever think about the other two girls in Mystique? <laughs> at which point Harvey goes, what? <laughs> and Alicia in the back going, you what? <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> even if I didn't think you was joking, I was going to kill you. And I couldn't even quite oh, work out what that meant. And I'm thinking, OK, I've got one of the So Solid crew wanting to kill me. <laughs> and I still need to finish this interview somehow. <laughs> and I can't remember the rest of the stuff I said I couldn't get out of there fast enough. But I was actually seriously scared. And I was actually scared for weeks afterwards, thinking they're going to be waiting for me outside. <laughs> Do you feel like you have freedom to talk about what you want to talk about on air, or do you feel you can be a bit restrained sometimes? Yeah, I, I, I feel like we have freedom, but we also yeah. know the parameters. You know, yeah. we kind of know what we'll get told off by our boss for. Yeah. Um, my previous radio station, I worked in Newcastle for a station called Galaxy. And when I started there, yeah. they had done some research that the audience didn't think the station was as edgy as it ought to be. So I had a boss that was like, brilliant, let's get complaints, get complaints. So I had absolute free reign to do anything that I wanted. Yeah. And if you got complaints, he was happy. And that was really like fun radio to do yeah. at the time. And we got really good, you know, listening figures from it. And it's not quite that free now, but we're pretty much left alone, I think, aren't we? Yeah, we are. And I suppose it's like a, it's like a, almost like a moral compass as well you know that that sort of you you know that between sort of half seven and quarter to nine there will be kids listening whether they want to or not sort of in the car or in the kitchen or whatever so you can tailor it so that the adults will sort of get it and the younger kids won't but you know you're yeah 13 14 year olds will probably get it and snigger about it you know <laughs> yeah. um and we we normally take it to that edge and just bring it back a little bit. <laughs> about twice a year I get a serious inquiry <laughs> about something or other I've said. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know you're G1, aren't you? Yeah, I know, I am. What yeah. for, do you know? Or? Oh, no, 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 I haven't done it yet. No, no. I, I don't know what's happened. I don't know if our boss has got soft or what, but um, yeah, what have I got in trouble for? Discussing different countries' role within the war is one. <laughs> <laughs> what did they do? Yeah, or what the, yeah, leave that one. Uh, offending scoutmasters. <laughs> There's been a few. Oh yeah, do you ever think that radio might be becoming old fashioned, like people are switching to their, putting their iPods on in the car instead of listening to the radio? Like I noticed now when we go on long car journeys, my mum doesn't tend to put the radio on as much as she did when I was younger. Do you think that's going to become an issue or do you think that the radio will still carry on for and be fine for a long time? I think for music, mm. it's always going to be your iPod. But the, your iPod, uh, for me, is full of music that I want to hear when I want to hear it sort of thing. Yeah. But a lot of the time, I will switch the radio on to hear... Um, you know what's number one in the chart, or you know what's hot, yeah. because they'll have a release. They'll have the song before it's released, before I can put it on my iPod. Yeah. And also, I think radio is always your mate. If you're on a long car journey, I, I quite like to hear yeah. somebody chatting away, or or you know telling me something, or yeah. or listening to a bit of comedy, or anything like that. I really enjoy it, and I think it's your mate in the kitchen. And and also, if you're getting up for for the for the day. Um, you you almost want to know what the weather is like. You want to know what your drive to work is going to be like. Yeah. You want to know what the news is. You want to know um, if Seal and Heidi Klum have split up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Phaser and Talisa as well. Um, uh, you know, it, it's it's for that sort of hotness. You know what yeah. I mean? It's it's up to the minute. I, I think there is like a real issue, and statistically, there's yeah. far fewer young people <laughs> listening to the radio, yeah. and I think. 
you know, I think you're onto something. I think if, if that's not addressed, it will be a problem in the future. I think radio had more of a relevance um, a few years ago before people could just download songs, before they could find out the news as it happened online or on your phone, whatever. And, um, and I think there can always be a place for radio, but I yeah. think it needs to create um, a relationship with the youth of today with you well that's your that's your yeah. job that's the next yeah. generation it's your responsibility yeah. but I think it does need to sort of move on and and mm -hmm. you know uh, and build a rapport with you know, 15 year olds that are going to be 25 in 10 years time and are going to be the next generation of, of radio listeners I, I spent some time at a radio station over in America um, well say a radio station there's about 30 radio stations and what what they've done is they've split it all up so you have 30 different radio stations all down one corridor and they have a jazz station that will only play jazz music yeah. then they have a contemporary station that's playing their sort of billboard um, songs and then you have a news station now the billboard station doesn't play any news or anything like that it's not like over here where we do everything they're literally split up if you want travel you go to that station if you want news, you go to that station. Mm -hmm. If you want music, you go to that station. If you want talk, you go there. And you know they've really sort of split it up, so you have the choice. And so maybe you know we we might find that that happens a little yeah, bit more. So people are, stations are a little bit more niche. Yeah. For what people want. Do you think that works then splitting it up? Don't know. Don't know. It, it just sounded weird to me. I'm quite happy yeah. to sort of get everything from one place. Yeah. For me, but um, I don't know. Maybe. Um, you obviously like talking between the tracks. How do you decide what topics you're going to discuss, or is it just spur of the moment? Something pops into your head. It's never spur of the moment. We we have like a show plan that's up on a whiteboard in our studio, and we never use it, but it's there, so, and we refresh it every day. But it's there so that if we ever come in and we, we're like, I've got nothing to talk about we've got a whole show there ready to go and they're all you know stories that we've brought in i think both of us now just take everything from everyday life and um make notes on our phone i find that's the easiest thing you've always got your phone so yeah. there'll be a load of things from today or whatever little notes and observations and even just one or two words can be enough to sort of remind you of that so we'll kind of both go in armed with things that we can talk about um, and we'll just sort of try and place them where they'll fit in at the show. For example, if Zoe's talking about where she's going on holiday, I wouldn't play a song and then I talk about where I'm going on holiday. We talk about something else, you, yeah. do you know what I mean? And, and same thing, we wouldn't have two relationship problems, uh, you know, one after another, that kind of thing. So you, 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 we've all got a kind of overview on variety, I think, and we sort of roughly take it in turns that Zoe will do something, I'll do something. Kind of thing. Do you like like listening to your own voice? Do you think if you heard yourself back, you'd like it, or you would get embarrassed? Well, we we listen back to yeah. the show sort of two or three times a week, yeah. um, with our boss and whatever, and um, I, <laughs> uh, it, it's something that I've had yeah. to do for years and years now, and it's never particularly comfortable. No, I can imagine. Um, but I used to work with a guy who, yeah. whenever he heard himself back, would start miming the words that he was saying <laughs> would stop <laughs> and he'd be like oh no you're doing it again now <laughs> whenever he heard it yeah. but I do normally laugh at the same things I do find a lot of things funny again and again <laughs> I know. like that, like that. <laughs> I find it I do find it weird and especially now we um, we only ever really listen to ourselves with our boss there and like two or three <laughs> other people. And there's, yeah. it's the weirdest job in the world in that if you work in a shop, no one really sees what you, you do or what you say to customers. Whereas there's your kind of day's work for everybody to yeah. listen to again and again and again. And when you say something stupid or you think, oh, I shouldn't have said that, you've got all those eyes looking at you and yeah, you sort of sink in your chair a little bit. So I'm not hugely comfortable yeah. with it. Are there any bits of your job that you like dread, like the worst parts, and you're like, oh, I do not want to do this? Well, you, I tell you what, you always start at a radio station and you always leave at some point. And there are, <laughs> you know, everybody will have their last day. And so, yeah, yeah there, there's a, like, a bit of you at times thinking, oh, am I going to get the sack? Am I going to get the sack today? Have I upset the boss <laughs> enough? Yeah. Sort of thing. But yeah, that. Yeah. Um... And when I get these in trouble twice a year. I, get, I still get butterflies yeah. in my tummy. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I, do, I don't dread getting up anymore. Mm. You know, it's yeah. happened for so long now, and um, I, I, I get up. I get in my car. I, I just get on with it. It's just yeah. a routine yeah. now. I, I don't even think. God, that's an awful time to be getting up. I just get up. My clothes are ready. Right. Um, and when I get in the car and I ring Gillies, and when he doesn't pick up after like the sixth call, then I dread it. I think, oh no, where is he? <laughs> so he rings me because I may or may not have overslept on occasions in the past. So I now have. <laughs> oh no, you've got to hear the full story. Oh go, no, go. no, no, you haven't. No, you don't. Yeah, no, you don't want to know. <laughs> okay, once in particular that I did accidentally oversleep and wake up at half past ten in the morning. Our show runs six till ten, so I'd missed the entire show by half an hour. <laughs> I woke up, I had like 98 missed calls on my phone. And by the time I phoned my boss, he'd gone past being angry to thinking something serious must have happened. So they kind of were okay with me. Yeah. Until the next day, when I should have been in at six o'clock, I accidentally overslept again. Till half past seven, yeah, I got in a lot of trouble for that. So Zoe kindly makes sure that I'm up and I'm still not great at it. <laughs> but apart from that, there aren't really any bad things. No. In I've got, to be fair, it's a pretty good job in that respect. It's, yeah, it's pretty good in, I mean, if you come in and you're miserable, like I am sometimes, you know what, you get on air and you think, do you know what, it's a bloody great job. Yeah. You know what, well, you're in the studio, you're having a laugh, yeah. you know, tea is coming at a rate <laughs> yeah. of a cup every 15 minutes, you know, that's not bad, is it, you know, yeah. and, you, and you're on air, you're chatting and, you know, the listeners are your mates and, you know, it's, it, it's actually a really, really good life. Yeah. It must feel good knowing that you make, like, you make people's day start off feeling good. That I think that's feeling, lovely. Yeah. When people sort of email or yeah. whatever and they say, oh, we listen in the car yeah. and... People think I'm mad because I'm laughing while I'm sat in the car on my own. And, you know that that makes yeah. me laugh as well. I think, oh, that's good. I like that. You kind of you forget though, there's that side to it though. Um, I know essentially we're just sat in a room, you know, chatting away between two, three of us or whatever. And you, t you know, I sometimes forget that there's actually people that that listen and yeah. strangers will come up and go, oh, I do talk about such and such. I'm thinking. Did, Did you? I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And people that you you know you've just met. Yeah. Sometimes sort of act like, you know, they know you, and, and I'm like, Hang on, why are you being so forward? You, you know, you've just met me, and I forget that they've heard my life story, you know, several times over on the yeah. radio. Have you ever been asked to like discuss something on air that you're not entirely comfortable with, or that you don't necessarily agree with, and you've but you've just had to do it anyway, and not really known how to deal with it? I regularly enjoy asking Zoe questions that she feels <laughs> awkward, with me, but I feel it makes real yeah. radio. Yeah. Yeah. I have a problem mm -hmm. in that I talk to Gillies outside of the studio yeah. and I know that he's going to bring that up on air yeah. <laughs> and then when he does yeah. it surprises me every time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you out. oh why didn't I shut up yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, I, know, I know what really upset me on air um, I'd split up with the guy that I was supposed to marry mm. uh, about three months previous to this and I was sending him a Valentine's card. Uh, now, whether you think that's right or wrong... Wrong. It's, well, anyway, that was what I was doing. Uh, but my parents were not amused at him cancelling the wedding, etc, etc. Um, and so Gillies rang my mum to tell her that I was sending him a Valentine's card. Uh, oh, I wasn't very happy about no. that. I was trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> While you were on air? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, Zoe cried and everything. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, oh. You still laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, laugh. Oh, oh. That's how. That's how I deal with serious things. I laugh, which is not always good. Have yeah. you tried to get him back for that? Or not? But the thing is, is if I go after him for that, yeah, he'll he's going to come back at me again. Yeah. And I, half the time, I think I take enough flack as it is. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's all our questions. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for talking to us yeah, today. No